You coming this way, Chris? Eric's going to talk way. us through. He's going to go right to the left of Chris. There you go. So, Seve and I have a lot in common. Yeah, me mm. too. <laughs> uh, let me start over. What's that nice tan? Yeah. <laughs> we like nice one. Never mind. I stopped talking. <laughs> um, what I've explored a lot in bunkers. When I work around the greens, I'll do a lot of work with uh, seven and eight iron, exploring different relationships with the turf. Opening up an eight iron, I'll try to hit, you know, these really cool flop shots from underneath the rocks to that first flag, getting it to come up and stop. Just, just again, exploring risk conditions and paces and relationships with the, with the floor, the, the ground. So what I see a lot in bunkers is, is a lot of amateurs will come with their most lofted club trying to generate a lot of speed, throwing the head early, hitting it flat, hitting it fat. Can you show us the wrong way first? <clears throat> the wrong way, what I, what I witness a lot is a square stance, narrow stance, too much body movement, the club coming up, the face too square, and this, right? So getting, Getting the body lines, and I'm sure you guys have seen this in all your applications, all your platforms and YouTube and instruction of aiming left, getting the body, getting the weight to move over in the left side a little bit, getting the handle to lead at first, and then coming up, and it's, what did you call it, load force? Uh, float load. Float load. So, so I'm actually fairly loose. It might seem rigid, but I'm fairly loose when I come up, and the head will actually stop and my hands will come down. When I get in here, it does switch ends quite rapidly. And it almost feels like this lead hand, as it goes through the turf, comes back, wraps around my body, comes up and stops into this pocket, and it's like, it's like this. If I do it too soon, I hit it thin, but it's switching directions pretty quick, getting that speed. And I'll see a lot of hands ending up like this in the bunker which we're taking that handle and taking the leading edge too far this way before the, the bounce get in, in, introduced when this risk works this way, All right? So that'll, that'll introduce the bounce. Here I stop, my hands are pretty close to my left thigh. And what I've explored a lot with doing it with less speed, taking a nine iron, eight iron, Pitching wedge, getting a decently desirable lie, a little bit on the upslope. What club is that, Eric? This is nine. Brendan's nine. I wouldn't take my nine in here. There's too many rocks. <laughs> wow. Good night. Good night. Oh. And just giving you know a little, a little flick of the wrist, but it's it's experiencing the weight and the space of where I am oh. and where. It's dangerous down here. Yeah. <laughs> And that one I felt the toe roll just a little bit more than the first one, keeping that leading edge, introducing into the sandwich, dug a little bit, it went lower and pulled. So then my wrist worked this way. I'm trying to let the, the, the float load up here, the hands lead, the head gets thrown under, and this wrist, the left wrist bends quite a bit. And another, another trick would be to really go strong with the left wrist and weak with the right, and that'll really get that face to rotate open. And when I do that, I can feel in my wrist how much. So, so from here, I almost have no chance of that toe out racing the heel, keeping the, bo the, the bounce, the main point of contact with the sand. Wow, Just give it a Action. little flick. Right, so over the years, and, and, and a lot of it is, is what is my situation? Again, the environmental cues of what's my lie, the firmness of the sand, the speed of the greens, the whole location, how much I have to work with. And I haven't hit a lot of bunker shots in tournaments with nine irons, I've hit a few, but I practice this way just to keep exploring different fields. Opening up the toolbox to see what I have available to me. If I use it once in my life, it's worth the exploration. Right, so as you guys continue to learn, and Mary learned, she's like, I never would have thought. And she came over here and she hit a shot, full understanding 
of how this pattern and the rest are released by doing this this weird who would have somebody yeah right but it turned on such a light bulb for her of what's actually happening on the way down with the motorcycle working this way how that that wrist so 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 getting the exploration of feels you guys is so important to golf and like it's been explained we're stuck in this little bubble of what we think we're supposed to do and we're stuck there without exploring more and more and more <clears throat> right so i get in i'll get wide i'll get low i'll press the hands forward i'll hinge soon and it's just a flick that's pretty good I should do this more often. who wants to try it with the nine iron Me. brendan's nine iron <laughs> yeah, who asked for bunker? Somebody yesterday said we need but we need but we need bunker. Well, I said that bunker played a little Come on, Chris, give it a shot. Yeah. Whichever one you want. Bro, he's challenged me to hit a nine. Yeah, go nine. Let's go. I mean, it's obviously from the rain. Yeah. So, so do kind of like a waggle of the feel you're thinking, Chris. Good out. Not bad, take it. So adjustment, go ahead again. Yeah. Set up to your comfort. Okay. So let's let's widen the base. Okay. Okay. Let's open the face a lot more. Even mess with that grip if you can go strong left and weak right. Yeah. Okay. Now if you look at where you want it to go, is your body comfortably set up? Um, I'm aiming left. I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm aiming at that kind of that hole. Right yeah. There. Shot Chris, good job. Yeah. All right, give him the 60 now. Yeah, right there. To wrap it up. It's, it's, it's the drill. And, and this should be like easy mode. It was a little different. Yeah. Can I just show? Please do. Okay, just um, imagine the ball's there, just take a, take a set off. Okay, just swing it back halfway. Imagine the club face is a mirror. Mm -hmm. And here, when you swing it back, you should be able to see your face in it. But with the wrist cocked, fully cocked. Okay, that's that's not the full mirror. Like yes. That. You can okay. see more of the mirror. Yeah. Okay, now I want you to swing through and show yourself in the mirror again on the way through. On the same side, you should be able to yeah. see yourself. There you go. Okay, so. You should be able to see your full reflection in that mirror. So mm -hmm. what that is, is lock, okay? Right. See how it's changed all this? Yeah. It's rotating the shaft. Yeah, my wrist is really cut too. Yeah, go back down. Okay, now swing back and show the mirror to the ground so you can't see any of yourself in the mirror. Okay, yeah. so is that gonna hit high or low, do you think? That's gonna be low. Okay, now go back again. Now show yourself, there you go. Even more, that's not still not in yeah, the yeah. yeah. Feel what you're doing to the shaft? Mm -hmm. Exactly yeah. what Eric said, just different ways of doing the same thing. Yeah. Go again. See if you can do it earlier. Really open it up early. Just there you go. Okay, because as Eric was saying, okay, when you do it earlier, so is the club, take your uh, left arm off, keep your right arm on. Is that heavy or light uh, compared heavy. to that? Oh, it's, yeah, this is way heavier over here. Okay, so now, start again. Can you open it up and keep it as light as possible? So show yourself in the mirror, but keeping it as light as possible all the time. There we go, okay. So the mirror is the face and the lightness is the uh, shaft angle. Yeah, it's the balancing of the clubbing in relation yeah. to him. Yeah. So what he's doing, he's just feeling this, but he's sensing the mass of the clubbing or he, in terms of his pivot. So his angle of attack. Now, you can release that and I want you to be able to see yourself in that mirror as early as you can as you're striking that sand. See myself in the mirror. You so should be able to see yourself as early as possible striking the sand. I'm not sure I follow. On the way through. On the way through. Oh, I see. So like you should be able this. to see yourself as early as possible. 
Yeah. So you, as, as quickly as possible, you want to be showing yourself that mirror. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Give another go. Too late. Yeah. Way too late. Yeah, and again. Let the wrist carry on. Yeah. So hold it. You can let this thing no, no, no. go. See, she can still see herself in the mirror. Big difference, uh, yeah. As soon as you do that, you lose the mirror. Right. Okay. So this is back edge of soul stuff. This is what you were doing earlier with them fake looking at that. That's using the back edge of the bounce. So as much of the mirror as you can see and use it through impact, use it through the through the grab, that's it. Mmm, big difference. Good athlete. Now play that. Using the mirror. Just like Eric said, feeling it open as early as you can, use the mirror. That's okay. And again, you gotta release. Most of us are used to holding yeah. the release, not Letting go and using the bounce. Open it right up, use, that's it. It's designed to be used like this. Okay, so he's holding on. He's holding on, yeah. You can feel it. So now I just want him to take, take, your, hand, take your grip with your left hand. Let's listen for the bounce. Show yourself the face as early as you can. He's holding off. What he's not doing is this, like what Eric said, he's not letting the club pass his hands to show the face. See that? So the hands, like you saw Eric playing, the hands stop quick, and when these stop quick, that goes. That's your shot. The bunker, the bunker swing and our short game will really emulate our full swing. And you can really see Chris, he comes through and he's got like full rotation, which he does so beautifully in his full swing. And in the bunker, we, we don't want that body to keep rotating. We want those hands and that club. Yes. Hit as as possible. Like, Do that again. Like Marcus said, how quickly can we Hold see it. ourselves from the mirror from right in the back? Right. Swing back and through to that same place. Off you go. There you go. Take more divot. Off you go. And again, let's listen for that sound. One more. Deeper. Good. Now go and play it. You can strike the sand, by the way, guys. You've got so much room for error. You can strike the sand here if you want. You can strike that three, four inches before the ball. Played like this. Way before the ball. Oh, classy. <laughs> Round of applause for Chris being a good sport. Thank you, Chris. Different feel? Well, yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm just... Uh... There you go. Not a lot of rotation. Yeah. Flick of rotation. was the word. People yeah. are afraid of flicking, flipping. We spend all our time doing this, which has took Chris into this place. This is where you need this. He's using that in a place where you don't need it. And then when you do need it, this, the thing is that starts to come in because of the speed. Yeah. And then it's the, the release patterns aren't quite recognizable for the full swing, but you've got the repertoire. It's adapted it like Eric said. Yeah. And the sound then and the strike was fantastic. And guys, the bounce, the club is designed to give you margin for error. This, if once you release it like this, you are just using the bounce and you're, comp you're compressing sand. As long as you're catching sand and you are compressing, you, the minimum is you're getting the ball out. That's the first, first prerequisite. Second is, yeah, getting it close. I mean, we're looking to hold it, but we want to get it out. But this is, if you're never sure, this is the number one way just to get it out. Doesn't matter if he's aiming right, left, the sweet spot that determines where the ball's flying. So have one more go, see if you can do it again. Well, we know you can do it again. Yeah. Open the face and you can be so comfortable using loft, so confident using loft and bounce and letting it just, just release in. When you hear him say release loft, that's what it is. Look at that. Oh yeah, auto. Good job. Good job. Good job. Different feel? Yeah. Yeah, way different. Yeah. In what way? What's the big differential for you? Well, I mean, I, like I said to me, I, I just, I'm getting a little bit of turn, but it's mostly just bring it down, just let your hands go. There it was. Yeah. And do that with a nice thick divot yeah. when you're practicing. And if we want more divot, can you make the club even lighter when you take it back? Where would you go to make it even lighter? 
Yeah, so go again now and that'll help you make it, maybe make it more difficult. So you can start to play around, like Eric was talking about, being inventive in practice because you've got more to talk here. So can you hit one first, Marcus? Do you mind? And mine's a 60 if you want that, Marcus. Right. I've got a 50, but it'll be right. Okay. Oh, nice. So that was heavy. That was heavy, but it's a 50, kind of get away with it. Bounced it again, but look. Great shot. Still control. So I just got to get a bit closer, like Eric was saying. Probably because I'm using a 50 personally, I'd use my 58, but here, I'm probably not this way enough. That's better? Yeah, so that one, Marcus, you got to almost, you put yourself on a fake downhill lie almost. Exactly. And then you put it into the... Then you can release on that part of the arc, you've got loft and bounce going down because you've orientated it. Close to here. I was trying to do the work for the 50. Yeah. Trying to help it. 